I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. But the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Hey school, I'm Father Hill and welcome to the opening chapel of fall 2020. I'm broadcasting from the sacristy in the chapel of the Holy Cross. And to the best of my knowledge, you are in your dorm common spaces or your advisory meeting spaces. And advisors are taking attendance, Bram. So let's be honest. This is super weird and awkward for some of you. The subject of chapel itself may make you uncomfortable as it is. And now you are being required to do chapel in a small group of people you just barely know. Or in some cases, with people you may have known for some time now. Let's all just right now, take a big, deep, collective breath or two. Let's ex exhale all that is awkward and inhale the eternal love that animates the universe. Do that with me. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is to put senior leaders and returning students on the spot in your small groups and ask them to share with the rest of the dorm group a response to these two questions. Of course, they don't have to do this, but I hope that they will. The first question is, what were your feelings about chapel when you first arrived at Holderness? And the second question is, how do you feel about it now? So I'm going to ask you to pause me for as long as it takes for leaders and returners to answer that question and then hit play again when you're ready. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back. I'm really excited that we are making space as a school during this pandemic to continue a chapel tradition that began in 1879 in the old Trinity Church with students and faculty gathering in the spirit of our school motto, for God and humankind. The focus and mission of these meetings has adapted some since then but some things remain just the same. We are here to de-center ourselves and to re-center our thinking around serving others. Chapel is here as a tool for the building up of a caring community, for extending welcome and belonging, for listening deeply to the voices of others, and for learning to listen to that still, small voice speaking inside ourselves. Chapel is here to encourage your growth along your spiritual journey. Spiritual journey, wow, what a term. Here's what I mean by that. The spiritual journey is basically you discovering, becoming, and managing yourself, identifying your preferences, your interests, the ways you interact with other people, what you value, the ways that you make your choices and why. Your spiritual journey will involve devoted attention to reflecting on how it feels to you and how it feels to be you as you make an effort to be who you want to be. How are you impacted by others? How do you want to impact others? And what is the source or the purpose of your life? By virtue of being human, you are on a spiritual journey of some kind and there is no roadmap. Now, let me say an important thing. Chapel is not the same as church. Chapel and church are similar, but they are also fundamentally different. 
Chapel is churchy, church-like, but it is not the church. The church is a voluntary movement comprised of baptized people who worship and serve Jesus Christ as their Lord. I am an ordained elder in that movement. But school chapel is not the same as that movement. The chapel is the church's attempt to interface with a school community that shares many, but not all, of the same goals. At a school, that means we tend to the spiritual lives and needs of all students who enroll here, whoever they may be, whatever spiritual tradition or religion they represent, including none. Now, as Mr. Peck has reminded one quarter of the world's population, the Chinese word for crisis is a mashup of danger and opportunity. In these times, the 141-year tradition of Holderness Chapel could fold or it could flourish. I want us to grab the Holderness Chapel bull by the horns and to guide it into the brave new space during this opportunity. I hope that we will enter this space with a renewed sincerity. I hope we will hear from a wide variety of students and faculty. So this is your invitation. If you have a story or a message to share with the school, something important you have learned, a part of your journey you want us to know, let me know and do it quick. Spots are limited. Also, a word about music. Mr. Ellsworth is really excited about bringing student-led music to chapel, and I cannot wait. Obviously, we can't sing together in this format, but we are working to secure a chapel sound system that will broadcast to the entire quad for quad chapel and hopefully even outdoor chapel. We will join our voices together in song, in person, outside, very soon. Until then, an example of the type of musical offering we can enjoy. Mr. Ellsworth went to the outdoor chapel with his cello and some looping pedals and his amazing creativity, and he put together a most imaginative rendering of our school hymn, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God, known uh, among students here as 7-Eleven, which you will all learn and sing in good time. The words to this hymn say, Seek first in life the most important things, the kingdom of God, and all the other worries of daily life will fall into place. In keeping with the mantra above Mr. Ford's desk, the main thing is keeping the main thing the main thing. Seek for yourselves all sorts of things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Take it away, Mr. Ellsworth.
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah, How cool was that? Now I need to wrap up. So on behalf of Bishop Hirschfeld and the Diocese of New Hampshire, I invite you to participate in a chapel experience for all people, not just Episcopalians or Christians. Whether you are a person of faith or a person of doubt or both, no matter what your background, we hope to make chapel a place for you to learn, grow, be challenged, find your center, to learn to embrace the joy of yourself, to transform how you interact with others, and to empower you to serve the world. This chapel experience is here to give you strength when you are weak, hope when you are down, and grace when you have sinned. It is not here to convert you to anything except a better version of whatever it is you want for yourself. And that's all I have to say. And finally, I have one thing to teach you, and it's your line at the end. The line is, thanks be to God. That's the way we close every single chapel here with that dismissal. So I'll say my line, and then you end chapel with your line, thanks be to God. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.